Whether in the blog sphere, on radio or TV, the popularity of Sarah's cooking is built on responding to what her audiences want. Putting that to the test took Simba onto the set of another show. So why am I on the set of the link about to chat to the gorgeous Lerato Khanyaho? Well, there's a bit of a twist to this tale. We asked Sarah to prepare a meal for one of her favorite celebs without knowing that person's food preference. Things can get interesting. Lerato's path here has included hosting her own show on Soweto TV, doing car features on radio, and acting in several on-screen dramas. Crossover skills and interests that make her a natural at talk television. And you take a seat before I please faint? Please do, please do. I'm in the, the hot, hot seat. seat. Don't get too comfortable though. Uh -oh. It's my house. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you know that Sarah's going to be cooking for you today. Yes. So I need to find out, what do you like? I like almost everything, Simba. I mean, you know, being brought up in a township, you know, that's so diverse. I mean, I'll eat everything, but make sure that it's healthy at the same time. So I eat a lot of, I eat a lot of veggies, you know, um, not too much starch. And I'm not a fan of coconut, so go easy on the coconut. And I love seafood. You won Miss Soweto when you were 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that you'd have your own show? Um, no, funny enough, I didn't because, I mean, TV was always in the background, but far in the background. I mean, traveling was always my first love, so that's why I did a lot of traveling then. I was working for an airline, and um, but somewhere, somehow, you know, somebody there at the back said, maybe you could host a show and just fell in love with it. Went for auditions and boom, here I am. As a presenter, you always have to think on your feet. So. I'm going to test you on something. That <laughs> camera over there, I want you to imagine that you are in Paris, mm -hmm. right outside the Eiffel Tower, and give us a top billing link to that camera. All right, well, this is Lerato Khanyako signing off from the Eiffel Tower right here in Paris. Do stay tuned because we'll be back with more. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, now you've been Miss Soweto, you've mm -hmm. been Miss Jam Ali. Mm -hmm. Any aspirations of being Mrs. Mary? Um, wow, well, we could talk about that. A man can only try. You listen, I'm going to get onto that food. Definitely. See Good you luck with the show. All right, thank you. Lorato describes her show as a one-stop shop for aspirational and trendy young women. But let's get cooking. Sarah's down-to-earth food style began with growing up in rural Zimbabwe, where milk came from cows down the road and vegetables from the back garden. This looks great. It smells great. You got started already. Thanks. I did. I, w I wanted to be organized. And I've done a porcini and truffle soup for Lorato. And it's a very simple soup, but the truffle oil just adds a stamp of chic, which I think suits Lorato because she's uber chic. What's the main course? For the main course, because Lorato is so well-traveled and kind of exotic, I've gone for an Indian-style seafood curry. Because whenever I watch Lorato's show, she's so full of color and character, and I think that a curry will suit that. Well, you know what, Sarah? I've washed my hands. I'm ready to get stuck in. Should we get started? Yes, this way. Currently working on her second cookbook, Sarah's recipes are punctuated with great tips for general cooking. We're going to start with frying off the cumin, the coriander, and the chili flakes, and also a stick of cinnamon. And frying off the spices is really important because it kind of wakes them all up and makes all the flavors come alive. Make sure that your spices are still fresh and fragrant. Never store them for too long. Next in was curry powder, garlic, root ginger, as well as some chopped onion. Okay, is that right? Perfect. Before the TV show, you started off as a blogger. People don't actually realize how much work it really is. I know, that's so true, actually. I think people think it's really glamorous, and it's actually not at all. It's really hard work. You have to conceptualize the recipes, test the recipes two or three times, photograph the recipes, um, edit your photos, edit the copy, put it online. So it's actually a long process just for one blog post. but. If you're really passionate about it, it never actually feels like hard work. Okay, how's this looking? The onions have softened and they're just starting to go a little bit transparent, so that's perfect. Um, and now we can go in with the tomato. It's just canned tomatoes. Very simple, one of my pantry staples. is one of most people's pantry staples, I'm sure. And then whenever I'm cooking with tomatoes, I add a teaspoon or two of sugar and it just counteracts some of the sharpness of the tomatoes. That smells good already. After adding some pre-cooked butter nut, a red flag suddenly went up. So this is one can of full cream coconut milk. Are you sure you want to put that much in? Why? Uh, I think that's fine. Is there something I don't know? 
will work with Does us. Does Lorato hate coconut milk? <laughs> I think it's a bit late now. Oh my gosh! <laughs> but you know what? I'm sure it'll taste great. Let's see if she can okay. figure it out. <laughs> okay. All right, we won't put it all in. I normally would put the whole tin. Mm -hmm. And then that can just bubble away gently. Wow, that smells good. Perfect. We're ready for the seafood, actually. That's so, still frozen. Yeah, it's still frozen. And that's the great thing about cooking with seafood is it goes straight from your freezer pot plate within about 15 minutes. Sarah would have loved to have cooked for all of her grandparents, but only ever met two of them. For those with grandparents close by, it's a lovely idea. Dessert was a frozen treat. That came out well. Yeah, it's all nice and set. Now to finish it off. Okay, could you grate over some of the clementine zest? Okay, how much? Uh, so that it looks pretty. Perfect. And then we've got our malt chocolate dust. Oh, wow. So just sprinkle that over. How's it, guys? How's it? Oh, hey, you are just in time for pudding. Listen, I've had a long down set, so this is fantastic. What you got for me? We have a spiced poached pear mm -hmm. ice cream with okay. malt chocolate dust and a spiced honey syrup. Okay, well, I'm a fan of chocolates. Of course. Well, that's what I guess. I love it. Sour, nice sour. The chocolate divine. A bit of narky there. <laughs> narky, nice. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Do you want to make Sarah's pear gelato? Cube pears, then poach in a spicy syrup and freeze. Blend with Greek yogurt and a taste of honey until you have a smooth consistency. Lerato, you are going to love the starter. Mmm, I love it. Not too salty, which is what I love because I'm a very healthy person. Mm -hmm. Taste a bit of cream there on top. Yeah, just a little swirl of truffle cream for a little bit of silkiness. Okay. Do you cook a lot? I do, Simba. I cook every day. Okay, I'm pushing it. No, maybe twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you've tried that, I think it's time for the main course. <laughs> Dig in. Prawns, my favorite. How did you know? <laughs> Lucky guess. Oh, okay. Mmm, I really like it. Is there coconut milk in here? Yep. I'm not a fan of coconut, but the coconut milk works. There we Yay. go. <laughs> it didn't do that bad not knowing what her preferences I are. I know, I'm so happy. Well, you know, how about this? At mine Lerato's wedding, you can be our chef. <laughs> okay. <laughs> may I have your hand? Perhaps the lesson was that food may also be the way to a woman's heart.